Hey, what's up everybody? How y'all doing today? What's it called? Magicon show? Gonna get started on some, uh... Oh... Minecraft. Yes. Don't know why that took forever. Gotcha. So... I'm gonna go ahead and just start doing some promoting here real quick. Shameless self-promotions! Jones barbecue with fuzz massage. 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 Shameless self promotion. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft lately. There we go. Text my brother so they can know I'm on. Okay, now shameless, shameless self-promotions are done. Let's see how much I'll mess up because the they because they flipped a lot of the controls from between the Switch to PlayStation. So yeah, let's get started. Okay. Woohoo! Yeah. So, some of you might know, this is where I stopped. Jones barbecue with foot massage, Jones barbecue with foot massage. One of my favorite videos ever. Like, no joke. I show, I, I show people that, like, all the time, the Jones barbecue, good ass barbecue and foot massage. Oh man, that that's like a piece of I feel like that's a piece a good piece of YouTube history right there. Just imagine like randomly you're going through your YouTube and you hear Jones barbecue and foot massage, Jones barbecue and foot massage. Yeah. For those that don't know, uh I think if I'm correct, it was like a it was a YouTube channel called Dog Eat World or something like that. I can't remember. But what they did was they hired a comedian to play a guy named Toby Jones. And they went to one of his stand-up shows. I think it was like at a coffee shop at the time. And they liked him and they asked him, Hey, do you want to audition for a character? And the guy goes, Well, heck yeah, I do. So he goes and he auditions to play a guy named Toby Jones. And he absolutely loved it. Oh, yay. That's right. I'm totally thrown off because this is a completely different experience than what I'm used to at the moment. By that I mean, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I guess judging from... Okay, so I need wood. That's what it's looking like here. Well, let's see. I don't think I'll have what I need. 
I need a lot of different things in this game. But it's looking like at most I'm going to need to be quite a bit. So yeah, uh, it's kind of funny. So I'm doing, so that's Fortress Maximus for those that don't know. Um, I've been calling it Fortress Maximus because uh, he's, it's one of my favorite Transformers. Uh, those that, uh, yeah, he, he's a city-sized Transformer. They they actually call, I, I for, like I forget specifically what they call him. I know he he's a part of the Autobot faction, but like they c refer to him as the uh, city bots because like there are entire cities that are built. And they know their place, and it's not like it's something like malicious or anything like that. It's more along the lines of I was specific. I was specifically designed to be a city so other people could live uh, off of what I can offer them. And these city bots were known as Fortress Maximus. Um, yeah, it was like Fortress Maximus. Uh, What's the other guy's name? Yeah, they all got some pretty wacky names. But it's like Fortress Maximus, uh... Crap. Sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Metroplex is one of them. Then they have a Decepticon known as Trypticon. But Trypticon's kind of like a defunct city because he was kind of in it for selfish gain. Yeah, he didn't relatively care about uh, anybody else. And he actually looked like a dinosaur when he transformed, so he's like a giant T-Rex. But to give you an idea of how big these guys are, in Transformer, I actually own the Transformers game. It's the uh, fall of Cybertron. Optimus f finds out that there is a Transformer that could help them. And he goes, please, help me. No, I order you to help me. And he turns into... And he presses a switch and he awakens Metroplex. And Metroplex... Oh, crap. Oh, gosh. That sucks. Yeah, Metroplex is a... Turn... Yeah, Metroplex is a robot that became a... Or not... But yeah, he's a robot. But... He, his, to give you an idea how big these guys are, imagine Optimus Prime. And now, imagine Metroplex being, having, now imagine uh, Optimus only being basically a, a fist compared to this guy. Like, the guy's about, the guy is about the size of, like, the guy's fist is what Optimus sizes up to be. Yeah. It's a pretty crazy. It's a pretty crazy thing to see. You just got a city-sized transformer, and then like he's just whenever he punches something, like the entire uh, Autobot get, or Decepticon or whatever, just gets completely obliterated. It's crazy. Hold on, wait. Shameless advertising again. Yeah. Let's see. Go here. Okay. Yeah. I'm texting one of my army buddies. Um, by that, like, it's at, like he, this dude was like my childhood friend, and he went into the army. I don't know if he's still there. I haven't talked to him in a hot minute. Feel kind of bad that I haven't talked to him in a hot minute. Actually, the last time I talked to him, uh, we were playing Minecraft on the Xbox. It's easier to play at, uh, Minecraft on the Xbox with him and just come up with something pretty cool to play versus, you know. So yeah, I've been playing on my I've been playing Minecraft on my Switch whenever I'm not streaming just so I can get some uh, practice in and just uh, figure out what I kind of want to do with Minecraft at the moment, like. The, the thing is that the entire idea is building and stuff, so it, it makes me, so I have to actually think of purposes, you know, like, what what is the purpose of me building this thing? And that's just what I enjoy about the game, is that you can build with purpose. 
But like, it's also the fact that I'm trying to also learn how to do certain things. Like, uh, a good example is, um, uh, what is the good, there's a, there's a lot of good examples, but basically the example I'm trying to come up with is, uh, how do I put it? Trying to figure out some good farming methods for different to make like big trees, uh, cause I I enjoy playing Minecraft and Minecraft helps me mellow out a lot. Talking to you guys helps me mellow out too. Stream all of it helps me mellow out. Yeah. I, and I like to stream on my days off too because um, my work schedule got a little crazier, just a little. And like I know the other night I did like a four hour Minecraft stream and I felt like I needed to finish my house. Actually it was a fortress, hence calling it Fortress Maximus. I, I got some really good ideas with it. And you're probably all thinking, well, why did you make the brick thing? I, I wanted to make a brick house. But then I remembered uh, I wanted to do a lot of different things with the, with the wood, too. So the rest kind of just followed into place. Followed suit a little bit. I also kind of like the idea of an open area. Like a court. Kind of like an open area kind of thing. It's not a courtyard area. Well, I guess you, if you want to count it as one, you could. But the idea, though, is that I'm trying to, uh, yeah, the idea I'm trying to come, I'm, I'm trying to do is basically, uh, just build. That's all I want to do is just build. Probably, this is probably one of my, probably that fortress right there itself is probably one of my more ambitious projects. Got potatoes over here. I think I got beets over there. I, I want to put carrots here. I was like working on some farming techniques as well. And I kind of like how I got the farming down a little bit. So let's see. Let's go ahead and do a few stacks of these. Turn all that into that. I'm gonna get some fences. Here we go. I'll do two stacks. Oh, not too much either. It's, I'm trying to get some fence. Like I was trying to figure out uh, some good some good ways to kind of light up the area because there's a lot of monsters that come out. So like uh, yeah, like in, in the other game I'm in my other game I'm playing. Um, all right, I'm just kind of like looking at I'm just looking at different things, you know. What I want to do, stuff I do want to do, like uh, I'm just like I said, I'm kind of just experimenting a little bit. So, like an example was, I put like a light post here, kind of like uh, that over there, like what I did, and with that too, I put one up here on top of the house. And I didn't, or I put it, it was actually inside my house in my other game, just so I wouldn't have monsters whenever I'm building the ceiling. Only for, uh, <laughs> it was actually kind of funny. It ended up becoming like, uh, uh how's I going to put it? Um, uh, yeah, basically what, okay. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this wall real quick. Cause I got the one bridge, but I kind of want all the bridges to connect, you know? Um, uh, I think I'll move this real quick. Yeah, so I use my other save to kind of uh, figure out what I want to do here. And the thing is, I like building bridges, but it's also how lazy I feel, too. So, here we go. So, I'm going to put this right here. Yeah. I really don't know why it makes that shiny thing. It doesn't do that in my... Uh, Minecraft game and the Switch. 
Not at least not from what I can tell. It doesn't feel like that at all. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, go ahead and get rid of this. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. I like building bridges. I really do. So we got... It's three apart... It's just fun. Thing. It's just fun to figure out what you want to do with it. Cause the other one, I have like an island survival thing kind of going on. Not 100% island survival, but more along the lines of, um, yeah. It's just one. It, it's just a thing I'm doing, working on. There's a lot I want to do with this. I, can, I, I sometimes I feel I'm pretty ambitious when it comes to building stuff in Minecraft. I'm not trying to like make it look like the o opening to the game, you know, where it's like, uh, where like so like basically looks like somebody went in and just built an entire Middle Earth to this game. That would be tough to make, even in the creative mode. I think there's there's an article that said that people that a group of gamers built the entirety of Middle-earth um, in Minecraft and it took them nine years to do it and then the meme that went around was my friends you bow to no one and to me that I, I thought that, that was like in a very ambitious project I try to find copies of it not to mimic or anything but just to go hey I want to check this out for myself that looks pretty dope. Might change the ladder position as well. My friends, you bow to no one. It's actually probably one of my favorite lines in the Return of the King. Because imagine that, like, you're, you're, what's it called? You're good friends with the king, and he goes, you bow to no one. Imagine trying to put that on your resume. Why do you not bow to your lord? I bow to no one, according to the king of Gondor. Ah, oh, man. I'm going to fix this, because this is bugging me here. <laughs> you love to eat. America loves to eat. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I got that Jones barbecue and foot massage stuck on my head. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it's probably one of my favorite videos. Absolutely love it. Every single instinct in a second of it. Let me see. Yeah, I don't got a lot of yeah, I don't got a lot of charcoal left. Cause it's like I said, it's pretty ambitious whenever you try to do stuff like that, you know. Like I said, I, I like to do amb very ambitious projects. I will say though, because. Brick, oh, what's it called? Stone brick's a lot better to come by than, than clay. Like I, I wasted so much trying to make the clay, that it totally didn't hit me that I could have done something different. So yeah, I like to build around the area that I'm trying to work with. Let's see. Jones barbecue and foot massage. Jones barbecue and foot massage. I 
thing I just re bought. I think that's more andesite. That's the thing I hate is whenever, like, I know they're adding different materials and stuff to make a, a more of an impact, I guess you can say. I don't know if I could even call it an impact, but basically what they were trying to do was, okay, it was uh, basically say, okay, we want to add more depth. I guess depth is the first, 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 I guess the thing you should say, but I guess they wanted to add more... Uh, geology to it I'm gonna call it geology they wanted to add more geology to the games to the game and they decided to add like andesite and all this other stuff and by all means if you feel that's necessary for your game do it but I gotta say it's kinda old <laughs> by that I mean like uh in my other game I had to I built a big old stone house like a stone wall stone brick wall house it looks not it kind of looks like this but like a smaller version of it and I don't actually have a wall like I do here it, it's a it, it's it's just this house but with a stone wall and not like this kind of stone wall it, it, it's or actually like this kind of stone wall but it's closed on the top That's all I wanted to do. Just stir. Put this in the materials. Yeah, that, that yeah. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Haha. -ha. Yeah, now that's better. That's been bugging me. That was all the way back here, and now it's right here. So, yay. Alright, let's go get some more wood. And that's the thing about the game. Whenever you're not going into a mine or whatever, it's like you got this, uh... Um... Thing. I don't know. Uh, what I want to get my hands on in this game is Bamboo. Yeah, I was fine. I I was like looking it up the other day, and I found out that bamboo in this game is uh, how do I put it? Uh, bamboo in this game is a lot of fun to get a hold of, mostly because uh, it's mostly because bamboo is uh, you can make scaffolding out of it, and to me, all I could think of was. Where was this originally? Because scaffolding is, comp is super useful. Take some of the sugar cane here. And the reason why I make I say it's it's super useful is just because it is. Like, do you have any idea what you can use scaffolding for? So basically, you can build like I, I call it a stairway. Yeah, basically you can build. You you you. It's easy to it's easy to knock over. Yes, but basically you can safely you can like oh crap what was that oh I, I was just thinking okay pretty much the way I look at it is that you can build a kind of like basically you can build an elevator like if you have soul sand I mean I probably should do that but I don't have soul sand in this game in the other game I totally do but like Say you find like a canyon, right? Instead of uh, having to go, or not a cat, but I guess it's a cavern, canyon, crevice, maybe. Either way, there's like a big old can, like a gorge. That's what I like to call them, gorge. It's a big old gorge in the game that takes you automatically all the way down to uh, y, what's called y-axis twelve. And you have a higher chance of getting uh, certain things, like uh, I guess those that want it. Um, ooh, dark oak. Nah, I'm gonna use just oak oak. But basically, you have like this large crevice, and you can just you can base you can just pretty much build an elevator or 
pretty much just use the bamboo for scaffolding and just climb up. And then it's just easier to knock down, just punch it. That's how a lot of people are, or in these games at least. Because, like, to me, a gorge, uh, like a gorge, is fun to explore because it's not something that appears in Minecraft, but when it does, oh my gosh, it could mean life or death. If it's in, in a desert biome, whenever you stack sand on top of uh, on top, whenever you stack sand, you could just like get all the sand to collapse. <laughs> Quickest way to find a gorge, but it could be dangerous because what if you're standing on what if you're standing on top of it, you know? Um, let's see. What all do I have? I got 21 blocks. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just go build those bridges. Building bridges. With friendship is power. Also, the ta fact that my fortress is easy to spot from farther distances. My dirt home, I had to actually, like, squint. And now that I see it, there's a big old stone fortress, why the heck not? On top of that, like, my crop is growing pretty well. Never go hungry again in Minecraft. Makes you want to patent the vegan challenge. So yeah, I did that side, now this side. Alright, so because I know where that's at, boom, 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 add to my fences. Okay, here we go. Yeah. I do want to see somebody actually build Majora's Moon, though. I can only imagine. So, like, I've seen some ambitious project videos, and one of the one of the things I like is seeing explosions and just watching people like react to the explosions. An example is a, uh, um, I I want to say this is actually pretty underrated. Um, there are TNT videos. I don't know if anyone's watched those. Um, comment if you have, I guess. But basically, uh, for those that don't know, there are TNT videos where people will actually uh, make big balls of TNT, and they'll actually tell you that this... They'll go into the creative mode. I really doubt somebody actually did this in the survival mode, because you could just ruin your entire survival this way. But what they would do is they'll use... They'll build an obsidian house, Right? So they'll build an obsidian house, and within that obsidian house, they'll uh, what's called? They'll have like a redstone uh, wire, I guess is what it's called. And they'll have the redstone wire go from point A to point B, and there'll be like a ball of like say five million TNT. And they actually count. And it's just like a big, huge ball of TNT. And next thing you know, they blow it up. Like, I think there's... And then they have a video saying it actually took this long. And I think in Minecraft terms, it took this... Uh, it, they'll say it took this long to explode. And by that, it means like... Uh, the, mine, it, the explosions happen so fast... Minecraft can't render the area, so the game just freezes until the explosions stop. If I correct, it took two hours 
for the guy that did the to who did this project to uh yeah it took about two hours for this guy who did this project to um go uh my thing my house exploded or something or like they use obsidians because the obsidian won't blow up you know so I'm sorry I'm getting a little tongue tied Then I'll put this up here. But yeah, they'll use obsidian to, uh, there we go. Got a light post here. Yeah, the plan is actually to, to string up lanterns across here to light, to light these things better. You see? You see? This is why. Okay, I can probably get him with the axe. Oh crap, I have that much gunpowder? I like to use TNT for some of my more ambitious projects. But yeah, basically what... what basically, the, whenever they get out, they are just decimated their entire existence. Like, you just don't even see... Like, you see debris everywhere. There's, it's just not even a giant crater. It's just, everything's just gone. There's a donkey. Yeah, there's just, everything is gone. And, like, nobody is like, uh... Yeah. Everything's just gone. Disappeared. Vominos. Oh, crap. Yeah, I don't have that. Ooh. Yeah, because I it, it took a while to get bows and arrows in the one of the games I had. Just went ahead and did that. But yeah, if you ever have like an ambitious project you want to do or something, I say go for it. I don't even know what made me segue into that. Oh yeah. I gotta get rid of things. Also, like... And that's the thing, like I do some, I have some ambitious projects, but it's just me working on them. It's, I'm not even recruiting anybody. That's the thing. It, I, I don't mind working on projects myself. They're so much fun to do on your own anyways. But dang, there are just some times where I'm like, I, I, I took, the, like, this is a big, th this is a big thing to chew on. Put that in the smoker. I love that they added, I, I love the new addition to a smoker. I, I feel like that's pretty awesome to have in Minecraft. Every but like every material that can, that has to be smelted or cooked gets its own thing, like a blast furnace for all the things. But I gotta make more uh, charcoal, and I gotta figure out what to do with pumpkin patch. So I found some pumpkins. Gotta also figure out if I want to do something with. I don't even think I can do any. I don't know where. I don't remember what I could do with that uh, thing. Okay, so we're going to put sapling, 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 sapling. Put some light on each side. <sighs> Actually, I don't care for that. I want to I want to try the grounds cuz like 
I know people whenever they make the trees and they had to when they make the trees in the nether or underground, they have to put that there. It's like one of those have to kind of things. And they build the underground things. Yeah, it's a must, depending on what you're doing. Whoa! Wasn't expecting that. Oops. Go ahead and try again. Yeah, because I'm trying to make those big trees. People know what I'm talking about. Like, you know what I'm saying, dog? Let me see. No, I got, I got rid of those, yeah. That's what I thought. Dang it. I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's really just... Like, I can grow all the trees in the world, but it's just easier if I just go up to random trees and just take them down. I like actually using dark oak, because, oh, well, depending on, depending on the projects. For like a regular house, oak's just fine. But like, I like using birch as the, I like using birch as charcoal. But it also depends on where I'm at. To me, I think the ugliest tree to get is the uh, Akaya or something like that. It's the orange one. But they make for... And I feel like they make uh, for their houses, though. It looks like a prison door. I'm not going to lie. Like, oh, it's a screen door. Here you go. But I don't want the screen door. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to grab a bunch of these... Birch planks. 21st century schizoid man. That one, that that's that line is just stuck in my head just because uh. There is a you there is a animator, that goes by Tabs, on YouTube. She's great. I love her videos. I'll watch it when they come out. And she was talking about how people uh have to wash their. People had to relearn how to wash their hands after the events, which I think is, like, really dumb, because, well, I also work in the food industry, so I didn't have to relearn how to wash my hands, but there is a proper way that I had to be trained on. Mostly, it's just, okay, we're going to do this, or whatever. It's like, hey, we're going to do, we're, we're going to get you to do this. But as I'm, but I digress... She started sing. They say you should sing a song for this long, and it should be equal to thirty seconds as you wash your hands. So people were like doing their favorite songs on the memes, and she started doing. At one point, she started going twenty first century schizoid man because all of because she did like her own thirty second melody song, and one of them was and it ended on twenty first century schizoid man, and. Which makes me assume that she's a fan of Ozzy Osbourne because that's that's how I know that song is a uh, through an uh, Ozzy Osbourne's Prince of Darkness album. Man, I wish I kept those bones now. Yeah, I like having the doggos because they just help attack everything. Except creepers, they, they know better. But if you had like an ocelot, then the creeper would go, no, please don't. Okay, just gonna start putting some materials away. Don't really need dirt. Those can. 
Those can be used for something different. Same. Oh yeah, I remember what I wanted to do with the fences. Never mind. The fences can come back. Like I said, in my other save, I was kind of playing around with uh, certain things. So in this case, I was playing around, playing with the idea, the concept of one, two, ooh, oh, two, three, four. I was playing around the concept of making uh, light posts, or I've been calling them street lights, right here on the guard. What's it called on the garden? Oh snap! I didn't realize I was stepping in a campfire. See, just like that. I've been playing around with that idea. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has ever thought of that, but basically, I got I took the idea that uh, certain uh, trees need what's called need light when they're underground. So a lot of people just put torches or torches around the soil. They basically build a three by three grid. Yeah, they build a three. They build a three by three grid and just put torches all around it as a source of a uh, kind of uh, basically as a light source. So that way the uh, the what's it call what you call is it? Yeah, you know words are hard. Sorry guys. But basically, what the point I'm getting at is. Um, you create what you create these uh I'm gonna do I'm just gonna make all these real quick. So I can make a shit ton of sticks. Yeah. So I can make a crap ton of torches too. And the idea you see this is benefits me in a lot of way. I could basically have light during the at night time for for my crop and they can grow at night too at least that's the assumption I go I'm going under here you know makes an ass out of you and me and I'm pretty good at making an ass out of myself anyways so the assumption I'm going under right now is if I do if I make street lights like this I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna do basically if I make a street light it's gonna cause less animals to spawn around so I'm gonna go ahead and use, not uh, not no, I'm not gonna use the good stone. I'll use andesite. I always, t <laughs> I always tell my friends, there are no useless materials in Minecraft. You just haven't found a use for the materials yet. And I, hey, what's up, buddy? There are no useless materials in Minecraft. There, you just haven't found a use for them yet. And a lot of the times I tell people I use them as, like, dirt. I'll use dirt as scaffolding. And andesite. They're for, they're lit, if you actually look it up, they're actual just decoration blocks. And check this out. I just used it as a street lamp. Ah! There is no secret ingredient. It's just you. Yes, you are correct. It's just like I said in uh, R classic RPGs. Uh... They give they give you a stick in the pot lick, pin a twenty dollar twenty bucks on your collar, and wish you the best of luck. Yeah, so instead of ugly stringing torches around, I won't lie, the andesite does kinda look ugly. But the thing is that it's use it's it's use it's useful for my purposes, which is basically creating artificial light. For the plants to grow at nighttime.
Okay. I need to run in. Of course. I'm going to have to pick on these guys a little bit. Oh, crap. I do like to point out I did get the experience because I did hit that. I did do a lot of damage to the other guy. But I still hate the fact that despite my efforts, I still I, I, that still happened. And that is probably the crappiest part of my day at the moment. Especially since I still have yet to make arrows and there are monsters nearby. Oh boy. Yeah, my game's a mess right now. Yeah. Yeah, Marcus, I'm going to mention work does suck. That does suck. I always tell people to do what you like doing. And this is pretty much a hobby I can't I could get paid for, but I don't have the money to get paid for it. <laughs> of course. The whole, yeah. Like I said, sometimes I get too big for my britches whenever I make these things. Because the whole purpose... Oh, crap. I just need to sleep! Bed is too far away. Oh my gosh! I'm just gonna put these up. I didn't want to make my place ugly. I know, right? That's the kind of the whole purpose, though, of building like a wall like this is just so monsters don't spawn. But apparently it's dark enough for them to. So it kind of sucks. I also like to largely think it's where I position my bed. I wanted to do lanterns. Because lanterns look a lot nicer than just placing torches there. And the campfires obviously don't have enough radi radiance for anything. I just got hit with my shovel. Basically, if the lights do their job, I should be fine. Okay. I hate that you're too far away from your bed. Just do like a funny animation where he just dies to the bed. Wow, you just hear everything die.
Okay, cool. I still have a lot of brick blocks. That's good. To put that there. Well, we survived through the night. That's something. But basically, uh, and yeah, pretty much that sucked. <laughs> Tommy agrees. Don't you, boy? So we'll put this away in this material box. That away, too. I do need to get myself some sand, though. Oh, it's right there. Oh, that's what I did. I did a flint and steel at first. Huh? Here we go. I'll just use the leftover things here. So we'll do this. Boom. Yeah. So, for those that don't know, this should decrease from at least garden side the uh, likelihood of creatures spawning. But the thing is, the bigger and the more ambitious your projects, the more likely creatures will spawn, because you'll always miss something. Sadly, that is the truth behind Minecraft. Yeah, you, you, you can't fix all those problems. It's like racism in Disney Channel. You can't fix everything. Speaking of which, fun fact, for those that don't know, um, Disney's actually uh, canceling their, they're not canceling, but they're firing anybody that's a part of woke culture. Um, not intentionally firing, well, let me rephrase. Uh, what they're doing is they're trying to... Uh, Basically, after like the whole uh, wise, Rise of Sh Skywalker shenanigans, they uh, they feel like the woke culture kind like they're listening to the fans, and the fans are basically saying woke culture is what destroyed Star Wars. At first, you know, they were just going by what woke culture was saying, but then after all after seeing a bunch of youtubers and they did the research they were like holy crap somewhere along the line we really messed up and so they went ahead and fired the appropriate people who were responsible for for it such as Kathleen Kennedy got let go because she was a uh, part of the woke culture in fact she hated George Lucas so much she actually got uh she actually destroyed uh, Star Wars, and I'm not speaking. I'm not gonna. And I'm not uh, speaking like I'm an angry fanboy that wants to go. Hey, let's destroy Kathleen Kennedy because she did this. Yada yada yada. No, she got her just desserts. But the fact. But the thing is, I feel like at some point, uh, George Lucas went. Strike me down now, and I'll come back more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And she probably thought, oh, he's just quoting Star Wars like the nerd he is. And next thing you know, the fans, bat, the, the fans, like they, Disney finally listened to the fans, and then boom. And I imagine he's like sitting in a corner somewhere, actually gloating and saying, what did I tell you, Kathleen? Strike me down now, and I'll come back more powerful than you possibly imagine. Like he's quoting Obi-Wan Kenobi. 
and she is getting super upset. Like that's, I, I honestly I think that's like po uh, poetic justice. As George Lucas once said, it's like poetry; it rhymes. But and and there we're getting a lot of new Star Wars stuff here. But one of the things that I like, I think is hilarious is they hired uh, Keanu Reeves of all people, and I love the fact they hired Keanu Reeves. They hired Keanu Reeves to uh, play a Sith king, and a lot of people don't see him playing the villain. But I'm like, guys, you're not seeing the point here. The sequel trilogy was so bad. George Lucas hired John Wick to kill it, to kill the to, to kill the sequel trilogy. And here's the thing: the sequel trilogy is actually going to feature Keanu Reeves' character, uh, Keanu K E A N U. Um, he played Neo in uh, Matrix or John Wick. Yeah. It's just, uh, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I could be pronouncing it incorrectly, but I always thought that's what, how to spell Keanu Reeves. Keanu. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I butcher names. I do try my best. Like, here's the thing. I, my, what's called, my real name is, uh, Concepcion. And that is my name. It's Spanish for uh, the Immaculate Conception. And for those that don't know, that's the event that uh, that's the to get a little uh, biblical here. That's the, what you call the event that allowed the Christ to be conceived in the Virgin Mary. And that's exactly how people pronounce my name, Conception. Yeah, that's how people pronounce my name. Um, very, uh, I don't blame them either. It's like uh, Keanu or Keanu. I've been calling him Keanu. I, I don't mean to like butcher his name. I, I love the dude. Like his favorite, my favorite movie of his is actually Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. But the, but if I butcher his name, I am so sorry. I'm pretty bad. I try to spell do the because it's kind of my just desserts kind of thing. Um, people can't have a hard time mispronouncing my name, so I just shortened my name to Conch. And here we, and and that's just and that's just a call. Uh, someone at college g gave me that name, so I stuck with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. It's coming out. Uh, Bill and Ted. Yeah. If actually now I think about it, New Mute New Mutants comes out tomorrow. And uh, Bill and Ted comes out next week on September 1st. And I love the fact that Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Adventure is coming out. By the way, party on, Ro Rogue Wrench Soldier. Party on. I'm gonna start do I think I'm going to start doing that every time somebody uh, gets, in gets involved in the chat. For example, party on, Marcus. Party on, Rogue. Yeah. And so I feel like that's what I kind of want to do. I kind of want to start making that my thing, even though I'm totally copying... Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I want to see. Get along getting along with that, yeah. Let me see. Gate. I don't want a gate. Um uh, party on, bro. It's kinda of funny. We're talking about Keanu Reeves and here and I end up t saying that. Uh oh it's called yeah. And it wasn't even it was it was a Wayne's World reference too. I wasn't even trying to reference that, that dude. Oh, you can make an andesite wall. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. I'm gonna do it. Oh crap! I didn't realize I could make that much andesite wall. <clears throat> okay, so I guess andesite's a lot more useful if it makes walls. But yeah, so Keanu Reeves is going to be uh, a Sith Lord. But you see, the thing is, he's going to actually discover, or he's going to use a time travel method to actually travel in time. Because apparently the throne that uh, 
Oh, spoiler alert for the Rise of Skywalker. Unless you don't care, I'm not surprised if you do. If you don't care, um, apparently the the ooh, I better get to sleep. Sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. I don't even think I patched the hole in the roof. Yeah, Keon. Apparently, uh, he's going to play a character that's going to be allowed. Uh, that's going to uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Travel back in time. And he's going to basically annihilate the entire sequel trilogy. Like, he's going to do certain events that are going to change the sequel trilogy. Because this is what George Lucas wants to do. He wants to do director's cuts of the Rise of Skywalker and Last Jedi. Because so, apparently, The Last Jedi was actually going to be three and a half hour long movie. And I think if I'm correct... No, I, I doubt I'm correct. I don't think this, it's true, but... It could be the fact that uh, Rise of Skywalker or uh, Last Jedi was actually a long, uh, was purposefully a long movie, or not purposefully. I'm sorry. It was uh, the longest movie in the series, but I don't think that's true. I think it's the Revenge of the Sith. Actually, I think a lot happens in that movie. That's like the most ambitious of all the Star Wars movies. But the uh, point I'm getting at is that uh, they hired Keanu Reeves. To basically, well, do that. But to, to destroy, to go back in time and actually murder the sequel trilogy. To me, that's hilarious. Because they're like, well, who can re retcon anything? And then you just see George Lucas uh, grab the phone. Yeah, yeah, we need to hire John Wick. Yes, please. I understand he's a character, but you don't understand. We need to get rid of the sequel trilogy. We're hiring John Wick to do it. And he says, uh, what, how do we hire him? Tell him that the tell him that somebody killed his dog. He'll 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 come. Just and he just says the entire the entire Star Wars trilogy got killed by a dog. Go. Or the dog killed a, or the Star Wars trilogy sequel trilogy killed your dog. Go. Must have accidentally landed on top of that. Yeah. My street lights here. Hmm. Not as pretty as they could be, but I, I've had, had worse. Oh my gosh, you see my dirt house build in the first adventure. I'm going on an adventure. Oh, those are shorter. Oh, that's fine. Alright. Let me see. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. Every rose has its thorn. Yeah, now I can see where everything is. Okay. So the Nether has an update, and I guess you can get blue torches now. Yeah, they're called uh, soul flame, tor soul fire torches, soul flame torches. There, it's something along those lines. But yeah, it, it, it's a pretty interesting concept, actually. Um, I, I've tr personally, I've, I've tr tried to do it, but it's kind of tough to do it because you got to go through a little bit of things here and there. But I gotta check it out. I totally forgot how to make them. Because you could do a uh, soul flame of any kind, and then they do something different. I won't like I, I won't give you any misinformation, so I'm not gonna guess. It, it pretty lit. I see what you did there. But yeah, pretty much. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I found a dungeon. I got pretty lucky with that. Okay. Okay, I see what I wanted to do. I remember. I want to create a cavern more than I do want to actually make a natural cave. So I guess this will be a good place any to start.
back, get back, get back, get back. Yeah, there we go. Alright. I mean, that was as any good as place to start. Yeah, I think I, I was playing around in the Nether update when it first dropped. I was a, uh, I, I did some stuff here and there to check it out. Um, one of the fun things that I did, I guess, with the Nether update, uh, I actually grab like it's on my Switch, but I grabbed uh trees and from the Nether and I grew them out in the open over in the overworld. And I was just like, hey, why not try this? And it pretty much, that's all she wrote. It was actually really, it was actually really awesome. Man, I should have dug, uh, I can dig that way. But yeah, pretty much after doing all that mess, I was like, oh, hey, this is awesome. Why don't I do some more stuff? So after doing, yeah, basically after doing all that, I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do, people. Um, I went in there, and I was like, all right, time to take care of things. And one of the things I took care of was, hey, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little tongue-tied, and I'm just drawing blanks. Um, there we go. Yay. Um, anyways. Yeah, uh, you can also... Uh, actually, you can give gold bars. I'm, or nuggets, I think. And you can barter with uh, piglins. And if you don't have weapons, the piglins actually won't attack. It's pretty interesting. And you can use gold nuggets or gold bars to barter with them. And they'll give you some pretty cool weapons. Like You can actually give bleeding obsidian. And then they're used to make like some kind of thing. I can't remember what. I saw a whole YouTube tutorial on what you can do in the Nether update, and one of the most ambitious finds that you can try and get is Netherite. And Netherite is complicated, but it's easier to build a mine for Nether. It's easier to mine for Netherite just because you can use beds as TNT to make the job a lot quicker. I did. I was, I was, probably a loose cannon doing that. But yeah, like I, I, you take advantage of the mechanics, you know. Using a bed as uh, <laughs> as a TNT. Oh man, that was hilarious. And it does more damage than the TNT. That's the funny part. It really does. It's pretty hilarious. All right, gonna do that. So I don't know if any of y'all have tried it before, but if y'all ever get the chance, do it. I really mean it. Do it. Cause like I, I cause uh TNT is about is just it's even more rare now than uh No, you can't set the bed off remotely. You have to be close enough to the bed to trigger uh the um You have to be close enough to the bed to actually trigger the uh um, you're too far away from the bed. Yeah, to to kind of trigger that message. That's what you. That's kind of the goal that you need to set is trigger the bed. Um, let me see. Actually, I have an idea. Not the cobblestone, but I want to make. There we go. Let's do granite stairs and diorite stairs. See. I told you, everything has a use. Granted, I just found out that use useful. Yeah, suicide beds, pretty much. Um, can I do anything with gravel? I don't think I can. 
Yeah, I didn't think I could. Coarse dirt. I mean, yeah, it doesn't really do anything. But yeah, suicide beds. It's actually pretty hilarious. Just, uh, I'm sitting down. I'm going to have fun with this. And then, I'm going to It's gone. But what's even more hilarious about the the bed uh, the the suicide beds, um, now uh, it's not just the fact that they work; it's just it's also really useful too. Like holy crap, you have no idea. I usually I usually like to do wooden stairs, but I said why not? Pretty much. Because uh, the wooden stairs, to me, they, I think they work a lot better. Just because, or the wooden stairs work better because I can help, I can find my way out. Because it, because the diorite and all the other uh, diorite, granite, all of it, they, they blend in together. So that's how I find my way out. And I always tell people, you, you should make markers. They say, well, how do I mark where I've been? Well, basically, you can use a torch. That's a good one, but. Everything just, you can get lost with it. So if I were y'all, I would do stairs. Because stairs will only lead one, two ways, one, up or down. And if you've already gone down, that means you can only go up. And so... And that's the thing. Some people like to do it. Some people don't. I personally do. It also makes traveling up a lot easier, too. I will say, though, I almost died with the... Oh, and just so you know, Rogue Wrench... I believe it's pronounced suicided. The word that you use, suicided. It's suicided in some circles. And so, uh. Yeah. That's a, that, that's a thing I like to do right there. So, has anyone ever played, like, Minecraft and just listen to videos in the background? Like, I mean. You take your phone, and you have your phone playing, uh, example, uh, I used to play, uh, um, SCP videos. Why is your category a game called Street? I don't know. I really don't know. Like, I didn't even mess with the, with that whole thing. Like, I just basically go and I put my title down and then I just fix it whenever I get into the thing. But Street Hoop? I don't know why it's on Street Hoop. I think the only thing I could... There's actually nothing I could think of on why it would be Street Hoop. I don't know. I was. I never talk about sports. I never talk about anything like that. I'm just like, why would you be called Street Hoop? I don't play Street Hoop. I don't street ball. I don't play any kind of sports ball at the moment. I'm more about fighting sports, man. Cage fighting, come on. Give me some credit here, YouTube. So let's see. 20 pieces of coal, okay. I play Elite Dangerous and watch everyone hate, everybody hates Chris. <laughs> That, that that's that's quite a life you live there, buddy. I love everybody hates Chris. No. Oh crap! Why? Well, crap. I like to point out this is the funniest thing. Stop attacking the cow. What did the cow ever do to you? 
I say as I'll probably end up uh, killing it, collecting its meat and leather. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much not going to lie. Uh, I love Everybody Hates Chris. It's, it's a great show. It's hilarious. Everybody hates Chris. I think there was a short time where I was playing, uh, uh, what's that game called? Uh, um, what did I call it? Sorry, I'm not, okay, Resident Evil 5. And every time Chris died, we just play that murder, murder. Everybody hates Chris. And then after a while, somebody got clever and went, Everybody hates Chris. Because zombies. I hate the... No. I'm playing Red Dead and watching hit this. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I'm uh, I'm glad you're watching this, man. That's awesome. Red Dead, it's probably a game... Like, I haven't tried it. But I do know the game is super big. And it's one of those games that you... Like, if I'm correct, when Red Dead 2 and Spider-Man came out, the meme of the to at the time was, I've got nothing left except Spider-Man. And so, like, you had to delete everything just to make the game work, I guess. Oh my gosh. So I like to point out that this island is very, th th this continent is very populated. Okay. At least I can get the, at least I can spare the levels. I might actually leave this hollowed out. Might do something with this one day. Don't know what in, but it probably will. Put the raw beef there. Oh my god! Make a sex dungeon. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I, I think after I get the dungeon built, I don't know what to do from there. <laughs> you know? Like, I can only do so much in Minecraft. And apparently, other women don't count. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I think I ran out of feathers. Oh, wait, did I? No, I can still make more. Ha ha! Yeah, it throws me off that they just move everything into one thing and go, here you go. Just, there, there you go. Like, no. <laughs> Tell me what to do. I do like your ambitions, though, Rogue. Na 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 Everybody's singing it. I'm just singing it. Na 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 Does anyone know the point of putting the arrows in the offhand other than... Oh wait, what's this? Oh, power one, yeah. Like anybody? 
Got any reason why Minecraft developers felt that was necessary? Like, I think on my offhand, I'd rather be holding a shield. Maybe a map. Oh, crap. Number count? I have no idea. Also, I'd like to point out the cactuses grow weird in Minecraft. Like in my other Switch save, I actually have a, a wall of cacti, but they're in a diagonal because you can only grow cacti in a diagonal. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. There we go. Cause I'm TNT. I'm dynamite. I've only collected leather armor. I haven't even bothered going to search for iron. I'm not relatively caring about going underground. Everybody's thinking it, I'm just saying it. Michael Scott objectifies and sexualizes uh, um, the intern Ryan. Mm -hmm. He goes, and you little guy are the bale of the bull. Mm -hmm. Aw, baby calf, don't drop anything. Darn. I was hoping to at least get veal. Let's see. I tried down there. I might see if I can go any farther. No, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, I think this is as far as I go. Yes, at least you get what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. That's all I heard. <gasps> I just happened to find iron. Yay! I am having the bell of the bull. I think we can all agree we can learn a lot from Prison Mike in that episode. Prison Mike, Prison Mike. Who put a river here? And a drowned every time. Now I gotta pick on him. Holy crap. I could see the ocean, guys. <laughs> Not kidding. That's that's actually pretty hilarious. I might just schedule all that for demolition or something. I might just blow this whole t uh, top like a cork. It probably was. It, I think it's a swamp. Uh, or, you know, it's like, I don't know what you even call it. Because it has like I don't know, swamp like things but it could just be a pond 
pond, maybe a lake or something. I don't know. Destroy. Yeah, let's just level the place. Just like that. Oh, yeah. I think I might have continued this way. Looks like I did. Okay. Ooh. This is very different. Very different with indeed. Okay. Does anybody remember John LaJoey? The guy that did, uh... Ah! Crap. Does anyone remember him? He was the guy that did, uh, the... That one song, I don't give a crap. But, you know, he used the word, uh... He used the word chainsaw. I don't give a chainsaw. Chainsaw everyone, chainsaw everything. What? I don't give a chainsaw. Wee! I wonder if anyone uh remembers that. I don't give a chainsaw. Chainsaw everyone, chainsaw everything. What? And then what was the other one? Uh, uh, yeah, it was like a, it was like that dude like dominated cringe humor in like the mid two thousands. Like I swear, um, uh, I'm trying to, yeah. What was it? Uh, it was a. Uh, Show me your genitals, show me your genitals, genitalia! Yeah, that's one he was infamous for. Maybe if y'all know that one, I don't know. There is a lot of dungeons in here. That's like my second one. <gasps> oh, sharpness, okay. But dang, that's a lot of gunpowder, too. I think the game wants you to blow something up. And I got diamond horse armor, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know there's, like, a point where, uh... Like, cringe humor is pretty much, like... Not really accepted, I guess? I don't know if accepted's the right word. But basically, it's like, yeah, nobody accepts cringe humor anymore. Just because there was a lot of, like, racism involved in it, too. Which we all took part on, part in, in that case. But dang it, there were some really funny ones in the, out there. Yeah, but I was always thinking what happened to him. I haven't... I, well, then again, I don't really follow his career all that much. In fact, the one song I listened to all the time was uh, his uh, I Don't Give a Chainsaw. Chainsaw everyone. Chainsaw everything. What? Like, he just kept saying that how much he doesn't even give... He, he doesn't give a fuck. I'm going to stop giving a fuck. Like, he just doesn't give a fuck. And he goes, uh... 
He makes it a whole big gag about how much he doesn't. He goes, I played your rise every day. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. Like, that shows you how old. That song was new when he, when he, whenever he did that uh, joke. I wonder, is Lady Gaga still even a thing now? I never hear anything about her. I can't even say if she fell into obscurity because I don't follow uh, those singers anymore. And they haven't done anything major. I have seen like people's magazine photos where apparently Katy Perry's pregnant. But apparently that's all people care about nowadays. Who's all pregnant? And then, like, you try to be a good kid, and you're, and all of a sudden, everyone's like, "No, give me babies. We want babies." And we're like, "We can't just pump out babies. Some of us have lives." Huh. They done got to her before we could. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was actually, like, this happened a few months ago. Um, I watch this YouTuber called Wavy Web Surfer, man. I'm going to give him a shout out because I love his content. One of his content features him talking about old uh, celebrities on YouTube and web celebrities and memes and stuff. Okay, awesome. I'm talking to... That's awesome, uh... Bubbles. Uh, party on Bubbles. So anyways, yeah, Wavy Web Server has some of my favorite content on YouTube and it's basically about meme culture, but what happened to the meme culture or people and memes. So an example was, uh... Um, a great example was Rebecca Black. I don't know if anybody remembers Rebecca Black, but after her, uh, after she ran into that whole, uh, cyber, get, being cyber bullied because of, uh, uh, because of her song Friday, yeah, apparently, uh, what's her name, um, uh, Nick, not, no, 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 not Nicki Minaj, I'm sorry, uh, um, Rebecca Black was, uh, apparently, she got famous for that horrible Friday song. Like, gotta get down on Friday, Friday. Because I think she was like 13 or something. Someone wrote the song for her, and she performed it at a studio that basically you paid $5,000, and they'll turn and they'll make your song into a music video. And they'll post it on YouTube. And it's like one of those shady sites or whatever, right? They try to help kids make their dreams come true and being stars, but then you find out there's a lot of shade behind it later on. And, well, I was look. Well, anyways, he was talking about Rebecca Black and how she got cyberbullied. But eventually, Katy Perry and Lady Gaga went and said what she did was probably one of the most brave things that anyone could ever do. She took a gamble, and you know what? She's going to score big. Basically, Katy Perry did a song, a, her own version of Friday, which which became a last Friday night. Da, na, 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 na. That's the lyrics I know. Last Friday night. And apparently, uh, it was about Katy Perry dressing up as a teenager trying to go out on Friday. And what ended up happening? Well, uh, Rebecca Black's in it, and then her. Apparently her music career, she had a music career I didn't even know about. And so she, yeah, she had a whole music career. She makes music professionally. I was actually kind of surprised. Like I thought like that girl just fell into obscurity after a while. And then people who mentioned Rebecca Black that grew up in that time go, wait a minute, are you the same Rebecca Black that got down on Friday? I thought she'd laugh about it. Same with, like, uh, another meme called Scumbag Steve. Yeah. Apparently, the guy that was uh, Scumbag Steve, he was... He was trying to become a rapper in, like, the Boston area. And he took a picture for an album. And that was the infamous Scumbag Steve uh, meme. And apparently, he did not get... 
popular, by the way, as a meme. Because he became a living meme, and basically anybody... Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are mean. Like, they are. They, they cyber-bully her. She actually got to get pulled out of school because of all the bullying. And it's it, here's the thing. It wasn't even her song. Her friend wrote it for her to sing. And she did it because she couldn't... She didn't have anything else. Yeah, she got bullied pretty hard for it. Because I'm going to tell you, like, performing is hard. And at the time, I did laugh at her. I'm not going to lie. I did. But I was also a teenager whenever that came out. And that was just part of the culture at the time. But whenever, but the fact, I probably wouldn't have bullied her in the school. Maybe I would, like, tease her and pick on her. But I wouldn't bully her out of school. Like, straight up out of school. Yeah, it got to the point where she act like it was like one of those classic uh you'll receive death threats kind of thing. Yeah, I know. We were all young and dumb once. I'm probably still am. So, the point I'm getting at is uh scumbag Steve though. Yeah. He got bullied and harassed a lot and people actually kept calling him scumbag Steve and he looked at him and said Fool, my, this is my name. He actually, got, but ser yeah, kids are awful. And, uh, yeah, Scumbag Steve, he go, he, oh my gosh, he got picked on the worst, too. Because he was just trying to make it as a rapper, and then he ends up finding popularity many years later because people were calling him Scumbag Steve. He had no idea... Yeah, he had no idea why he was being called Scumbag Steve. And so finally somebody told him, oh, this is a meme about you. And they pulled his picture from MySpace, and somebody made a whole thing about it. And so eventually, uh, he ca eventually he did a news report, and he came out as Scumbag Steve. And people, like, bullied him. He hated it. Eventually, after a while, he embraced the uh, persona and the idea that he is Scumbag Steve. So he did a whole album called The Return of Scumbag Steve. But this is long after the meme basically died. Again, the fact that he... I applaud anybody that takes something that was negative and do something with it. Like, I don't know if people will ever know. Did, does anybody remember Antoine Dodson? Um, some of y'all, some of y'all young uh, people probably don't know, but uh, older people will. Antoine Dodson was the guy that uh, he he was infamous for saying, "Hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husbands, because everybody going to be raped tonight." Yeah, he was famous for actually saying that on uh, because uh, apparently somebody broke into uh, his sister's house and went and did that deed. And, you know, totally, totally messed up. And then he came out, and that's exactly what he said. Because nobody really did anything about it. And that was just, like, that was real. And at the time, that was very common and really bad, too. Check it out. trucker. And so, anyways... So anyways, Antoine Dotson, apparently, I didn't even know he had, he followed a career, but he tried becoming famous after it. And there's a creeper on my bed. <laughs> but to this day, I still think it's actually pretty hilarious, though. Just the, uh, hide your kids, hide your wife. All of that, yeah. So anyways, uh, going back to what I'm saying, uh, man, they turned in my fortress against me. Another thing, I, I sang this before I started, but I went, Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage! Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage! Yeah, that dude actually became a living meme, and he was one of the few examples 
where the meme actually became popular and a legend. Oh, you're a bit salty with Minecraft at the moment? Okay, we can stop talking about memes. Why are you salty about Minecraft? What did Minecraft do to you? What did it do? Do we need to beat up Minecraft? Okay. That cow's salty at me now. Dude, that's the plant place to get some uh, good ass barbecue. Yeah, Jones barbecue and foot massage. Jones barbecue and foot massage. You better come over here. It's some good ass shit. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, Toby Jones commercials, man. I live for it. Well, not the game itself, but I was playing with a guy you you and I knew, and he keeps playing the game for me. Okay. Uh, to the point I can't do crap so basically it's like okay I want to build a house and the guy builds the house for you is that pretty much what's going on because uh, I would like to elaborate further because playing the game could mean a lot of different things if you don't mind elaborating a little further oh yeah forgot okay so I'm out yeah Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Every time I say we, I wanna go find some things, he brings it back. Okay, that's actually pretty annoying, I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, pretty much, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much annoying, yeah. Like, I have told people, wait, we can't do that yet, we can't do that yet, just because of this. But then I'll start going, go for it, go for it, go for it kind of the thing I like to do but it usually depends on like the person itself I guess um because I, I know some people who've done some pretty dumb stuff in uh, what's called in the my in Minecraft not saying that everyone's dumb and makes mistakes but there are some not so very smart people that play Minecraft I'm one of them <laughs> Cause like oh my my brother probably locked on like I could make my brother cringe about it. I keep telling him that but the last straw was when I was in the middle of looking for an ancient blocks and he logs on just to find it first. Okay, that's yeah, yeah that that's pretty messed up. I just do my own thing in Minecraft. Like uh what was it oh uh, last time me and Chloe were playing she goes okay I want to go do this thing okay cool. What are you doing? Whatever the heck I want. I'm gonna put that right there. I think this looks so much better than the torches. It'll probably cover a lot more area too. But yeah, I have to admit, that's actually pretty annoying. Like, the whole point behind Minecraft is for you to build and find stuff. Like, uh... Like, there's different ways that people pl like to play. But the fact that this guy is going out of his way just so that... I don't know, to me he sounds like a simp. <laughs> like, uh, but I wanted to do this. Yeah, you're... like, No, I, I got this, I got this, fam. No, 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 I want to get this, fam. No, 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 I, I got this, fam. Yeah. I don't know, I just tell him never, just never log on when he's on. That's all I gotta say to that, in fact. Because, like, that, that is some, that, that's some BS right there, you know. Alright, cool, go ahead. Okay, I see now. Alright, um... I didn't expect him to actually play, cause like, he would like. Okay, so I guess he is a simp, <laughs> um, because that is like no, that's a big no, -uh, no. 
That's like uh, the that's the equivalent of a lot of different things, and I'm gonna say I do not approve of that at all. Like, I know, he, yeah, I understand. You know, people like to play. I get that, and it's just don't ruin the fun for everybody else. You know, like I I used to have fun just watching this guy uh, that we're that what's called that we're talking about. I used to laugh and make fun of the fact that he would, uh, that he tried to play Pokemon to, uh, to impress a girl. Only to get, like, rejected or something. Yeah, he got rejected pretty hardcore. I don't, like, yeah. But he was playing Pokemon Stadium 2, and it's where he got a lot of his information from. Yeah. But he, uh, he tried go, he tried playing Pokemon uh, Stadium 2 and tried to get all his information on Pokemon. And I'm like, dude, that's like this much. And like, you know, you you if people who play Pokemon know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that that is not enough. Sorry. If you if, you, if you're looking to play Pokemon and that's the best you can do, sorry, bud. Yeah, that's not going to cut it at all. Yeah, just say you don't play and stop trying to be a simp about it. Sorry, I love the guy, but I feel like with tough love is in order, and I gotta say, he's got he's got to stop being a simp. Oh man, our kings! If he breathes, he's a simp. Same energy. I like that I killed it with a feather. Yeah. But if he breathes, he's a simp. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying he's not. It's just when it comes... Yeah, I'm not saying he's not. It's just when it comes to certain things... Yeah. Like, I understand being passionate about something that you like, you know? Like, I love Star Wars, right? And I've been having problems with dealing with this, but... The thing that I hate about Star Wars the most is there's a toxic fan base to, attached to it that try to push uh, SJW agenda onto it. And to me, like, the entire game, the entire franchise has a history of having agenda pushed onto it. But it's not uh, SJW agenda base related things, though. It's more along the lines of... Uh, they talked about slavery and robots in this in the what's called in the series, and how they're treated as such in the original trilogy. And then on top of that, a lot of it was that the is that not only were the Empire racist towards droids because they barely had droids that could think for themselves. The droids that the that the Empire used were the only ones that uh, how do I put it, um, that did stuff that could be useful. An example was a. Uh, the little uh, rover droid that would just show them where you need to go because the Death Star is such a maze. And then uh, on top of that, they say, but basically what these SJWs are saying, there's not enough women's representation in Star Wars. I will agree, there is a lack of female characters in the movies, at least. Everywhere else, there's bountiful of, there's plenty of them. But you see the problem with. Uh, but the thing about the movies is that every time they show a female character in the movies, it's a female character with power. And I'm not going to use the sequel trilogies as an example. I'm actually going to use the original and prequels. An example, a great example of this is uh, Queen Amidala of the Naboo. Yeah, she is queen of a whole planet. You know? Um, it's queen of the whole planet. And you you just can't go you you like like seriously a, a queen of a whole planet who can say that? And the thing is, they only hire queens or elect queens not hire but elect queens to be to lead the planet. And apparently, she did so well on her on her first two terms, they tried to amend the, their constitution so she can serve another term. And they wanted her for a long time. So that kind of tells you how well liked, not only uh, how, how great of a ruler she was, but how well liked she was. And that's in the prequel trilogy alone.
And that's just one example of a female. Others have been, uh, what was it? Kira Knightley played a girl, girl named, uh, yeah, this blew my mind. I didn't even realize Kira Knightley was in these movies. But Kira Knightley played a girl known as, uh, uh, Sabe. For those that don't know, she played the decoy for Queen Amidala. Yeah. They try, yeah, I don't know if anybody knew that, but she played the queen. She played, uh, the decoy. And so, thus was the, uh, yeah, and pretty much that, yeah, she was great, yeah. And that's, and, she, and on top of that, she was willing to fight on her own, basically. Like, like she was a great Pat, uh, uh, Natalie Portman look-alike. And uh, she was actually younger than Natalie Portman when she filmed those movies. And Natalie Portman was supposed to be physically looking like she was 14. And again, this is only the first Star Wars movie that I'm referring to. The second one had a bounty hunter that failed to kill uh, uh, Queen uh, Padme, uh, Senator Amidala, because she became a senator. On top of that, there's all other women that are willing to step in and give their life for their senator. You know, that's a lot more than what most po uh, people can say whenever it comes to uh, protect, uh, protecting their political cabinet members. Yeah. But I digress. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's awesome. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go... But I, before this thing gets way too political, I'm going to go ahead and move on. All right, awesome. I hope you'll be back too. Before it gets too political and I start to hate myself, I'm going to go ahead and switch... The sub, I'm going to keep the subject Star Wars, but I'm going to go ahead and switch the subject to what's in the comics. And no, I'm not going to talk about controversial stuff in the comics. Um, they're doing a comic book series that takes place between the... Uh... Alright, bud. I'll catch you later, uh, Marcus. You be good, bud. Don't uh, Be safe and don't do drugs. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So basically what ends up happening in the prequels, I guess, we can say, or, uh, or in, I mean, in the original trilogy comics, um, <laughs> Luke actually goes to another planet, but Crash lands in the water. Apparently he has a bad habit of landing in the water. So... He goes... So, he, so whenever he finally makes it to dry land... It's a beach. So he goes and he starts kissing the floor and he goes, I miss sand. And all I can think of is uh, his father is somewhere crying right now because his only son misses sand. Then uh, let's not forget about the fact that... Uh, oh yeah. And then, like, later on, uh, he tries to... Yeah, there's, like, a lot of different things that they try to do in those series. Man, it's because it's not well lit over here. I'm afraid to even go in here now. Okay, this one not look too bad. So, yeah... So you have uh, uh, Pat, oh, it's called. So yeah, uh, and then Luke is trying to find a Jedi Master specifically because the Force basically told him you need to find this Master. This Master will help you out in ways that you can't even fathom. I'm also going to probably stop digging in that mine because I don't think it's going anywhere. I'll have to find something else. Something probably nearby. Oh yeah, my uh, I like uh putting enchantments on these books, right? Oh snap! I'm guessing this is a mine itself here. 
No, it's not. I think I remember. It's just a big old hole in the ground. Actually, now I think about it, I could probably turn it into a cavern. Let me see. Ah, uh, crap. I might have to dig myself out the old-fashioned way. With my hand. What's up, buddy? Uh-oh. You okay, Tommy? Huh, buddy? I'm talking to my dog. He's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and just go collect some of these things. Going to get some of these potatoes. Actually, I wonder if I can still find that village nearby. Now that I've developed my place and I can get lost. Because I wonder if I can trade any of the uh, crops that I have. This is why stick is best item. It does all the things I need it to do, and it won't break. Man, that's a lot of potatoes, too. Holy crap. Oh, so apparently there's actually a comic book where Vader actually goes to a planet. That's like a Sith planet, I or no, it's like a planet where the where you can communicate with the dead. And apparently he meets Padme there. And at some point, whenever he like he turn he basically turns into uh like an ether ghost kind of thing. Like his bot he has like an out of body experience as he goes through this afterlife. And then he go and he meets Padme. And then as soon as he sees Padme, Padme looks at him and says, "Are you an angel?" And all I could think of is, "Holy crap, they actually had her say that." Cuz this could go anywhere. But because we we we've seen the movies, we know exactly how it's going to end. Vader is just going to go, "I don't like you anymore." And just go ahead and annihilate her ghost. But yeah, like, he was trying to bring back Padme for some reason. I think he felt, like, I don't know, lonely, I guess. And try to bring back Padme. And it didn't work out so well, because, like, Ghost Padme didn't even want... Says, no, I'm dead. Like, there's no... There's no bringing me back from that, buddy. Y you lost your chance of keeping me alive. And it makes you feel pretty b sad for Vader, but at the same time, you're like, they, you, you brought it on yourself, bud. Sorry, dude. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Okay. So let's go ahead and just grab some more sticks. And we'll just go down the... the aisle here.
Hey, so Rogue, go ahead and give me a subject you want me to talk about. Like, it can pretty much be any subject. Alright, so Bill and Ted's, uh, Bill and Ted. I love Bill and Ted. So you see, fun story on how I discovered Bill and Ted. So, my dad is, my dad's best years were probably in the 80s. And some in the 90s, I guess. But mostly I'm saying the 80s because it was like everything that he consumed and watched was stuff from the 80s. An example was, uh... Every time he got a new uh, stereo, the type of stereo he wanted did both, not just CD, but it also had cassettes. And he would bring like a big old suitcase full of cassettes and uh, cassettes and CDs. Well, one of those things was that, uh, one of those things about Bill and Ted that, he, or one of those things was that he also kept VHS tapes. I mean, this dude had, I don't know, uh, uh, around 100 maybe, of different movies that he loved, mostly from the 80s. And then, you know, uh, what's it called? And, you know, we can't, we don't have enough time. We could probably watch all of them growing up, but, you know, we only, we didn't have, like, we had VHS players, but, like, he had to specifically go to a store to buy a VHS DVD combo player. Because we had... Because he was such... He didn't want uh, DVD. He wanted VHS. It had to be in VHS. And then he hated the fact that he was forced to go DVD. And he says, we don't even have a DVD player. And I said, yes, we do. And he goes, what? It's the, C it's the, it's the thing that you use as a CD player. That's the DVD player. Because, yeah, my dad used the DVD player as a CD player. Because uh, we, we had one of those combo things. Well, back to that uh, logic... And this wall of the on oh, this wall of VHSs, we were bored. My brothers and I were bored enough because we had we were just on reruns, and uh, yeah, we were on reruns for a long time. And the rerun went on about uh, like I can't remember. We were like watching cartoons and stuff. And we just felt like watching a movie one day, right? And the first movie that we saw that caught our eye was a movie called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And we're like, what's this about? So we read the back of the back, the synopsis on the back of the VHS tape, and it said that these dudes go in time to complete their history report, and they meet uh, Abraham Lincoln, the short dead dude Napoleon, um, Socrates, and I actually we actually pronounced it Socrates, and. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it was one of those uh, interesting finds. So we went ahead, grabbed the VHS, rewound it as fast as we could, or as backwards as we can, and we started playing it. We, and then one day my dad walked in and we were watching it, and he goes, what are y'all watching? And he said, one of your movies, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And we had never seen it before, so we watched it and we were like, oh my gosh, why didn't you show us, show this to us sooner, dude? Like, we, I felt like we were legitimately upset because not only did we love the first movie so much, we had no idea there was a sequel. I don't even think my, my dad knew there was a sequel either. But we saw it. We were like, oh my gosh. Like, why didn't you show us this sooner? Yeah, like, we, we were pretty offended at the fact that he didn't show this to us. So... I guess my whole analysis on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, it was a fun movie to watch. And just so you know, I was like in the fifth grade when I first watched the movie. What I didn't know is that, uh, what, yeah, what I didn't know was that, um, uh, Bill, uh, it had a sequel, Bogus Journey. I probably discovered this in junior high. And one day I saw Bill and Ted. I was like, oh, the excellent adventure is on. Yeah, I, it is. 
like, oh, one of the Bi- Bill and Ted's on. And I looked at it, it said Bogus Journey. And I was like, my friend told me that there was like sequels to this movie. He told me there was like three sequels in total. And he, he, it's kind of funny too, because when he said the third sequel, they actually go to the future and they found out they didn't die. They actually were really, really old. But here's the but the thing about it though was, it was all kind of like a lie. He he was I guess he was referring to that there was a cartoon series, that did, and I never watched the cartoon series. I don't think I ever really wanted to because, where would you go from the cartoon series? Especially since like this Bill and Ted's uh, face the music, one of the things I'm having a hard time comprehending was, aren't you guys supposed to be famous? Like, why are y'all uh? Like, like that was actually one of my genuine concerns about the movie. Y'all are supposed to be famous. Like, y'all had a whole thing in your end credits where y'all had a full career, like all planned out. Y'all won Battle of the Bands. Y'all guys got y'all's contracts, and y'all wrote a bunch of music. Y'all even played the first concert in Mars and established intergalactic peace. So why the heck are y'all making a sequel where y'all are wedding singers? And like, and then they have to write their, and then they have to write their uh, big movie and, or big uh, number. And so that's kind of one of the things I'm kind of concerned about the trailer, and in the fact that their kids go to hell and like from the what I've seen the trailers, and then like, to me I was just dumbfounded by, what are they planning? Because this is not what the what the uh, second movie. Uh, finished off on and I really do believe like after a while after I watched the second movie because I didn't read any of the newspaper clippings I just just played the end credits because ne- because the next movie I was coming on but then it didn't hit me until then like what were y'all planning on doing with all this you know oh snap that's big I'm gonna put a marker here so I remember and Back, and basically, this became like one of my favorite movies to watch, and I actually used it to, to answer some questions in history too. And my teacher was like, "Oh wow, that's actually pretty awesome. Where did you learn all this history?" And I said, "I watched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It's how I know Joan of Arc isn't Noah's wife." But I, I, I essentially, but essentially, someone said, "What was a?" Uh, when did Joan of Arc do this? 100 years of war. So yeah. But hearing but the thing about the bill the thing that I got to be worried about face the music is that they have what's called Bill and Ted are really old. <laughs> like Keanu like Keanu Reeves and uh Alex Winter. Yeah, like they, they like I bet this is the first. I don't know if it's their first time reuniting in years, but I feel like the if this movie is done wrong, it's gonna kill Keanu Reeves' uh, career. You know, like Keanu did not work his butt off just so that uh, Alex Winter can kill his career, and then again, his uh, career, like even though like he's like a lot of people forget that he probably played in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Everyone remembers him from, like, I think his career really shot off in the action genre with the movie Speed. They had, yeah, they had gray hair in the trailer. Like, like the, yeah, these guys are, I think if I'm correct, the actors are, like, in their 50s. Heck, Alex Winter actually went and had a directing uh, career. I don't know if you know this, Rogue, but one of the live-action Ben 10 movies was actually directed by Alex Winter. Yeah, who would have thunk it, right? Alex Winter directed the uh, Bill and Ted. He directed one of the Bill and Ted movies. Not Bill and Ted movies, sorry. He directed Ben 10. It, it actually blew my mind. And when people were like, what? Who's Alex Winter? I'm like, dude played uh, Bill in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Then he asked me, who played Ted? Keanu Reeves? Keanu Reeves doesn't do comedies. <laughs> a lot of people have a hard time believing that Keanu Reeves used to do comedies. I just laugh at them. But that's kind of the thing, though, is that uh, uh, the, they suggest a couples counseling, but I don't think your wife's had this in mind. No, we asked if it checks out. Because <laughs> Bill and Ted did everything together. I don't even know if there's actual real-life friends that actually do that. Not, not the whole couples counseling thing, but 
they uh they do everything together like it makes their makes their wives feel like the third wheel <laughs> but yeah like and that was also one of the things that i thought was kind of cool was the fact that ben that bill and ted are technically royalty because they married uh princesses from the medieval times but at the same time i feel like uh like they'll have they'll be executed for kidnapping the uh for for kidnapping oh man what was rufus getting himself into uh it would be awesome to see uh rufus back in the movie but he he's been uh his actor long past yeah rest rest in peace george carlin rest in peace okay there's a the village i'm looking for Yeah. As far I think the one I think the one bit Bill and Ted that actually had me like this wasn't as fun as the first movie was probably uh Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Cuz it was like it, it was so weird. Like it was not it was a, such a huge departure from the fun Bill and Ted that we all know and love, you know? Cuz like when you watch Bogus Journey at first, it starts off with them being goofballs, trying to work at, or trying to get a job. They're working at a food court and selling uh, cheesy fries. And then they all go buy, like, really cheap uh, engagement rings for their women. Or, uh, I like to say, whammon. But yeah, like, and they're trying to, they're, they're buying cheap engagement rings, and I'm like, oh man, okay. That's cool. And then next thing you know, uh, they 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 die. And all you got, all I could think of was, oh, poor them, you know, poor people. And after they die, they're they're evil. The evil version of them are they're like, wait, what? Why? Like, it was so for real. Like they were supposed to be like these uh, like these people who were universally loved by everyone and then, then they just decide to throw a wrench in the whole equation and say actually they're not love they're one person hates them here is the guy and it just it just like a lot of people just go wait hold on how can how can like somebody hate this these guys they're a bunch of goofballs it's like yeah but apparently it's enough to hate them I don't know. For me, it was a pretty weird experience. Because I can't... Oh, here's some carrots. Give me the carrots. I don't see... This is kind of ominous. I, I don't see any villagers. My brother told me that there was a... Oh, back in the old Minecraft, there were, like, there were villages you can find, but they were mostly abandoned. You'll occasionally find a villager, but back then the villagers were just flavor. They didn't really do anything. Later on, you could trade stuff with them with using emeralds, and emeralds is a form of payment. And somebody, uh, I think it was a MatPat or one of the game theorists, actually determined how much uh, things cost. Yeah, I know they have abandoned villages, because uh, it's it just back then it didn't make sense for the abandoned villages. Like, somebody just abandoned the village. And there's like a whole lot of lore for people to actually... Uh, to discover in these games like uh one of the lore bits was that uh why are the villages abandoned and some people just think that the monsters were too much zombies probably ate them and turned them into zombie villagers um villagers came and just killed everybody that's a that's a newer one like but back in the day a lot of people just think that uh there was an ancient race of builders that um what's his name uh that I guess kind of now, uh, looking back at it, apparently Steve, Minecraft Steve, is one of those people that he's, uh, or one of those characters where, who, who is this guy? And apparently their map hat theory is that there's an ancient race of builders that existed at some point. And this ancient race of builders was in fact uh, Minecraft, uh, Minecraft Steve's race. And so, after he pa so after he had long passed. Oh, there's a merchant. I wonder if I can get anything good from him. Uh 
Um, die, no. Yeah. But yeah, Minecraft Steve was some, uh... He, he was something different. Yeah. And I enjoyed Minecraft Steve a lot, but basically... Whenever they did, the, when Matt Pat did his whole theory thing, I was just like, "This is pretty interesting. You're finding lore bits that nobody asked for, <laughs> but I like it." Okay, I'll, let's see if I can find my way back. Yeah, I'm kind of a. Uh, I know there was like a a village, but it had some villagers in it when I last checked. But I guess I cleaned them out of their carrots. I, I wanted carrots for my village. It's like that empty section of space. Like, mm, I don't. I, I need this. I'll probably actually tame a horse. I have a saddle. I think. I think I have a saddle. I don't know, but I think I do have a saddle from one of the dungeons that I explored, or conquered, I should say. Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away, run away, run away, run away, what are I? That's the thing that does suck though, is that you, you need to go, if you wanted to actually make a beacon, or an underwater beacon, you gotta find a, a bunch of complicated materials just to build a light in the sky to find where you need to go. It's kind of like why I used to build like, uh, um, dirt towers with as high as it can possibly go and just create like I called it a light tower and just like attach a uh, what do you call it uh torches onto them oh wait I'm gonna go ahead and kill you wait a minute oh no those are roses that's also another thing I have not actually been able to find beehives or I haven't successfully, and it, even when I do, I haven't successfully been able to uh, do anything with them. Um, hey, Rogue, do you want to go ahead and hear about a crazy game that uh, I played before I moved to Lubbock? Because I had a friend who owned it, and I couldn't help but have to share it. Like, But it, it just so you know... Oh, the beehives. Okay, so you create honey. And then honey is ingredients that you can use to make food. But you can also use an army of bees to create, uh, you can use bees to create, um, what was it, an army, I guess? To kind of protect things? I can't remember. I, I just saw a YouTube clip where it says, how uh, using an army of bees to kill a nether, uh, an, a nether skeleton, or a nether, no, a nether, what was it called? A wither. Yeah. Alright, so I guess a game I'm gonna go ahead and talk about is this. Okay, so I'm gonna i I'm gonna give you another uh I'm gonna give you another uh um chance here, Rogue. But basically what I'm gonna say is the game I'm gonna talk about has very graphic uh and explicit scenes of not just violence and gore but very sensitive subject matters. So controversial it made the game uh rare to buy. And it was on PS2. So, for anybody else that just heard that warning, viewer discretion is advised. And I'm not going to show anything physically, because I'm playing Minecraft, obviously, but I'm going to be talking about some pretty graphic stuff. So, Rogue, you sure you're ready for this? Bro, it don't bother me at all. Okay, awesome. Glad we're on the same picture. So, there's a game I call, uh, I love to, that I learned, that I played and I have a very affectionate uh, feelings towards called Haunting Ground. Or it was Demento in Japan. Haunting Ground is a game where you play as a you play as an 18 year old blonde European girl. Um, and here's something interesting about that. It was, it's, a, it's a Capcom game and it's a pre it's a pre it's a predecessor of the Clock Tower series, or not a predecessor, successor of the Clock Tower series. It's supposed to be 
a successor. The Clock Tower series was basically infamous for uh, hide-and-seek horror games where you had to hide from a character known as the Scissor Man as he chases you around in a mansion that has a giant clock tower, hence the name. Later on, uh, other installments featured something different, too. The game was originally conceived on SNES, the Clock Tower, and then later remade and remastered on PS1. And it features you being chased by, by different pursuers, but in the original game, it was originally someone called the Scissor Man. And then other people who are copycats or just something else. In, uh... Um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Haunting Ground. You play as an 18-year-old girl who is riding, who's from, co who's going to college, and she decides to ride with her parents. Uh, my assumption is that she's taking Christmas break, or there's some kind of a holiday break, where she's gonna go and uh, what's called go and stay with her parents for the for a little while. And they get into a car accident. Said car accident uh, kills kills both uh, parents, but she lives. However, before she uh, before she falls or uh, falls unconscious, she sees somebody pull her out of the vehicle. The person that pulled her out of the vehicle, um, I'll explain here in a bit. She wait uh, pulls her out of the vehicle is not a friend. I'm already going to explain that since I'm already on the subject. He get, she gets she gets uh, she wakes up in a dungeon with nothing but a bed sheet over her, and she sees a large burly man uh, chopping away at some meat. Don't know what it, she doesn't know what it's for, but you can just see the dude just going, <laughs> oh. and he goes over and he tries to go to the cage to kind of fondle with her, and then he gets called up and he leaves. She finds out that the cage is unlocked and she leaves. Only wearing the be uh, the bed sheet. Yeah, after that unfortunate run in, she uh, yeah, after that unfortunate run in, she uh, uh, finds a bedroom, and in that bedroom, she's told this is where you will sleep and you will wear these clothes. Now she's given very provocative clothing to wear. They're very tight. They it's a it has a corset so a little bit, and then it shows off a lot of her bust and she wears a short skirt. And basically, what the whole goal behind her wearing that is the person who dressed her up that way was to objectify her. Like, object this this game does have a objectification of women, and specifically uh, Fiona. The girl's name we're talking about is Fiona. She is a very blonde. Beautiful, busty girl, but she also suffers from anxiety issues. The whole point of the game is for you to run around and defend yourself as you're trying to escape this castle. Um, yeah, you find out you're in a castle. What you... what Later on, uh, as you leave the room, you're being chased by the burly man, and you find out his name is Debilitas. Debilitas is a... Uh, it's a large, robust man, but he has the mind of a child. Basically, the best person I could think of is uh, Sloth from the Goonies. Yeah, that's how he acts. Except that he's not all that friendly. What he likes to do, though, is that he likes to play with dolls. And Fiona is pale with porcelain skin. And he just sees her as a big doll. So he chases you around while going, My darling, Fiona. Fiona, Fiona, and he starts chasing you around. And you see, the thing is, if he causes enough damage, or you run for too, if you run for too long, Fiona will actually start showing signs of fatigue. Yeah, I'm not kidding about that. He will, she will show signs of fatigue, and just go and just start slowly getting slower. So you have to hide, and you have to fight. Like you can, and the only thing that she can fight with is she can kick, and it's like a heel kick, you know, or not a heel kick, but like an ankle kick, like eh. <laughs> and it, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but if you do enough damage, he uh he will actually start crying and he'll run away because you hurt his feelings. And so he can't comprehend that you're flesh, 
later on he's he gets called off and uh you're greeted by your host his name is uh ricardo ricardo uh is a hooded figure and he is the one that tells you your parents are dead yeah they died in a car wreck i pulled you out you're going to be our guest for a while by the way since your parents died you are now the sole heir of uh, of this castle apparently what she did not know her father owned a castle and these people were its caretakers and they have no intention of letting Fiona go so later on as the game progresses you get chased by Debilitas again only for uh, only for uh, Debilitas to hear barking when you go towards the barking you find a dog is, t is leashed up with a wire and the wire is kind of cutting his neck because he doesn't like the wire he's trying to pull away Later on, as the as the story progresses, uh, the dog joint the dog you find out his name is Huey, and you join and you basically kind of adopt him, not hash, really, not really kind of thing. And he learns to and you teach him how to fight, and he learns to protect you. Yeah, so your main method of attack is training a dog, and at first it's like actually training a dog. He doesn't listen to you at first. He doesn't do what you always want him to do. So you actually have to either scold him or praise him, depending on how uh, on how he on how well he handles his commands. And then there's also such a thing as praising him too much where he'll actually start listening less because he thinks he's getting praised for it. And there's another part where he go where if you scold him too much, he doesn't listen to you because he thinks everything he does is wrong. Yeah. So yet, so it's kind of a complicated mechanic, and it's it's amazing because it existed in the PS2 era at the time. So as the uh, so you progress down the corridor and you solve some puzzles here and there, and you actually discover a more more about the game. The maid looks it's very beautiful, but looks almost not human. Like there's something about her that makes her too perfect. And then eventually you get to a church where uh, Debilitas waits. Now, in the final encounters for the bosses, because you, you spend your entire game running away from the enemies, but if you actually fi figure out how the bosses work in these games, or whenever uh, later on you have to fight the bosses in the final boss fight uh, for each of them, you either get the choice, well, not all the time actually, for Debilitas, you do get the choice on whether or not you want to kill him or not. And and it depends on the ending that you get that determines whether or not you spared him. If you basically drop a chandelier on Debilitas, he'll stop and realize that you're an actual person and that, does, uh, that doesn't want to get hurt. So he actually does a Japanese bow and says, I'm so and basically it's his way of communicating that he's sorry for trying to hurt you. All he wanted to do was play. Now, depending on how many times you've run through this game, you get two different endings with this. Ending A is, uh... It, the ending A, and it's the best ending, is that you just play through the rest of the game. And you end up going through a different part of the, of the, of the estate. And, uh... Yeah, you go... Oh, snap, I found a canyon. Wow, okay. So you end up going through a different part of the estate, and the estate takes you to, uh... Um... You get chased... You start getting chased by the maid. You find out the maid's actually a homunculus. And the reason why she wants a Fiona dead is actually pretty sinister. And it's also kind of sad. She wants Fiona dead so that she can use Fiona's uh, womanly body parts to make herself into a real woman. And that's like her whole goal, is to make her into her, her, is to turn herself into a real woman. It's all she wants. But the thing is, she can only do that with flesh and blood. And she sees Fiona being the only woman that's ever been taken there. So everybody has their own agenda with Fiona. Debilitas though was just more. Uh, oh, you you look like a doll. You what's called? So I'm gonna play with you like a doll. And Debilitas is the only one that actually learns his lesson. Oh, shit. 
Why well, I, I I should have followed the first rule of Minecraft. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. Please tell me I got dirt. No, I don't. Crap. Okay. I just have to dig out. So yeah, basically, uh, the yeah. So you find out she's a homunculus, and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do with this information? And it's basically you can't really do anything with that information except run away. And she actually, the thing is, she takes pride in her beauty. She really does. But she hates looking at herself in the mirror because it reminds her that, she, well, she also isn't human. You know, it's a pretty sad existence for her. So, anyways, she and she actually comes at you with a piece of broken glass, like and it's like it's like shaped like a curved sword too. So, like this girl gets pretty scary. Um. Anyways, uh, as I was going, moving on. Man, I'm really lost here. Like I'm saying, that canyon didn't exist before. Oh, I hope I don't have to start all over, especially since. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much she. Uh, pretty much Debilitas uh, goes and decides, uh, or not Debilitas, sorry. The maid. I forget her name though. Like I used to know all the characters' names, but her name's escaping my mind. But she basically, uh, um, uh, gets to the point where you actually get to a certain room, and you, you uncover a little bit more of the secrets. Everything in this game has to do with something with alchemy, and you find out there are other homunculi, but they're, but they're all failed experiments. A lot of them just go insane. They're just beating their heads across the wall, uh, against the wall, and then they're just like. They just don't function. They're not. They're nothing like a. Oh, her name's Daniela. the The maid's name is Daniela. She's nothing. They're nothing like Daniela. And after a while, uh, you end up uh, killing Daniela by dropping like uh, like you end up dropping something that spears her right through. I can't remember. I want to say it's like a big thing of glass because she shatters a glass mirror that's above her. And then she dies from that injury. And then you start running away from Ricardo. But Ricardo has like multiple phases throughout this game. So when you find Ricardo. So when you fight when you start going when Ricardo starts chasing you, it's in a old air like it's like an older area of the church of not at the church but specifically. It could actually could be one of the older churches. I have to remember I can't remember, but it's like at some point that's no, actually the old mansion. I think that's what it is. And uh, as you're being ch as you're ch being chased through the as you're being chased, he's the only one that actually has a gun. He'll fire at you with it, and this will also cause uh, Fiona to get scared and go into a panic. Just so you know, when Fiona goes into a panic, you she'll actually have a panic attack in the game. You lose control of her, and she just runs. And if she gets more damage, she'll actually start to crawl and try to run away as much as she possibly can. And it never works out for her, ever. Yeah, she just goes, ah, see me! And so after a while, like, yeah. She turns into an ogre. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. No, but for real, it's like... The pan like the panic system is actually pretty. Oh my gosh, you don't even want to know, dude. It, it can get pretty awful. Oh man, I wish I didn't lose my map. This will be so much easier. So yeah, uh, essentially after that, after after that whole mess with Debilla, after that whole mess. Um, she manages to leave the old mansion and go into a forest. Again, this is also where you can do a split thing here. Mo all three, there's four endings in the game in total. Three of the endings will have you going through there as Fiona and uh, three of the well, and just completing the game. The other one will actually have the game in there and it's the worst ending and it shows Fiona being captured. So, I guess I'll explain the other endings first before I go to that forest one. 
So the plot twist of the game is that Ricardo is actually a clone, but an incomplete clone. A clone without, uh, what they called it, uh, an Azoth. An Azoth is an, an alchemy that's basically like everything, it's a, it's a solution to everything. Because it's basically like a god kind of thing. It's like a god power kind of thing. Not a god machine, but it's, it's the solution to everything. But it's essentially what they call a soul. And because he was a clone without a soul, he doesn't age, he's in, he ages faster, he's infertile, and he also, uh, what's it called, he also has to do different, uh, he also has to absorb small animals as off. So whenever he, she saw the animal being butchered, uh, Ricardo just killed a small animal so that he could have his as off. Yeah, there's like a whole thing about it, it's, it's pretty crazy. After the whole, after uh, after that, she reve he reveals that the reason that what's called that not only is he a clone, but Fiona's father is the clone of the same person, but he has an Azoth, and therefore, by blood, genetically speaking, Ricardo is also Fiona's father. Therefore, she all has father issues, and he says, "My plan is to." Uh, is to fertilize your womb so that I can be reborn as the baby. Yeah, he wants to impregnate Fiona to and use the baby and be reborn as the baby so that way he can have an Azoth and he can live forever. Apparently every every version of Ricardo wants to use uh wants to use Fiona's Azoth to create immortality. And apparently her, her father's name is... Apparently the clone was Ugo. Uh, Ugo, yeah. So, what ends up happening is that... Uh, after discovering this, Fiona has a panic attack. She passes out. Now, this is the point where the game diverges. If you treated... Uh, if you treated uh, the dog Huey like crap... You can't find Huey. You can't save Huey. Uh... Like, because at one point, Huey gets hurt by Ricardo, and you can't find him, you can't save him, and then you just basically get a game over, with the horrible ending being that Fiona is heavily pregnant, and Ricardo just goes, soon, my dear, soon. Yeah, yeah, he actually impregnates Fiona in, in one of the endings. The other endings have Fiona wake up in a dungeon, and she is wearing a hospital gown? Um... Or it's like a, or it's like a small nightdress, and she actually has blood. Apparently, uh, uh, Ricardo saw, wanted to check to see if she was ovulating, but she did it like the old-fashioned way. Yeah. And so after checking, you know, make sure that she had the goods. I guess you could say, in a sense. Uh. He got uh, what's it called? She escapes, and Huey comes uh, and saves her. Yeah, Huey comes in and saves her, gives her the keys to the cell that she's in, and basically goes, yay, I live. Kind of, kind of, uh, she escapes, but Ricardo starts turning himself invisible, and you and you have to use Huey to basically uh, get out, uh, to find him and get out of there and solve the puzzle as quickly as you can, which is what you do. Like, because he recovers quickly if you try and kill him in any kind of way. Yeah, he, he is not a nice man to deal with. And keep in mind, he also likes to shoot you, too. Yeah. Or, well, in this case, he's not shooting you. He's just going to grab you and choking you out. You know, it's a different kind of shooting. It's like you're doing it, but with your fists. Uh, or your hand... Yeah. So, yeah. And he's... Yeah. And it, it does do a state of panic. But then he starts... every t And everyone has their own unique deaths. Just so you know, everyone has their own unique uh, de uh, de game over death screen. And one of them for Ricardo's is actually him going. <laughs> Basically, uh, he's having a good time with your body. Yeah. So after uh, after uh, after some shenanigans, she climbs to the highest part of the tower that she's in. It's actually like a it's a planetarium tower. 
and after solving some puzzles and you end up having to go th to uh yeah i think at some point you end up having to go uh um, yeah, you end up knocking him over the tower, and he kind of dies from the fall. But his Azoth still remains, whatever Azoth he had left. And then you see a guy named Lorenzo, like an old man. Um, throughout the game, you are receiving letters uh, from an old man named Lorenzo. And uh, you find that this old man crawls over to him and just absorbs his Azoth. And you find out that Lorenzo is a clone... Of a is a is an older clone. Apparently, he's a complete clone, and he and he, oh, it's called Ugo and Ricardo are clones of him. It's like a long line of clones that go back that go way back into uh, certain ages. It's a lot of cloning to make one guy, um, uh, what's it called uh, immortal. And if I recall, the guy's original name was Aurora Aurorus Belly. And he was like first born in the 1300s, and he did, and he continuously cloned himself to gain some form of immortality, so he can figure out, so he can solve the life equation, which was at the Azoth. Yeah, and then after a while, you go, you get chased by Lorenzo, and the thing is, Lorenzo looks like a crypt, looks like the crypt keeper, on a that's wheelchair bound, but he's so obsessed with being with uh, Fiona, he refers to Fiona as my Azoth, and just starts crawling towards Fiona like <laughs> Fiona after after solving some puzzles here and there uh, gets Lorenzo killed by having him go through a mash like a, like a masher like there was like a mashing kind of thing and he got mashed yeah so he gets like steamrolled over and she thinks it's all over but no you run into a guy that's known as young Lorenzo Apparently, uh, there wasn't like a cloning thing, but Lorenzo did some alchemy that and borrowed and borrowed Azoth from uh, he borrowed Azoth from the clone and he made himself younger. And he says, "This is what I used to look like, what your father used to look like." And apparently, this again, daddy issues. He planned to do the same thing Ricardo was going to do, except. Uh, they figure out that she is also the key to immortality because she was made... I don't know. It, it's super convoluted. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. <laughs> and so she's running away frightened. And as he's being chased, she goes through a series of colored corridors that, uh, through, yeah, that eventually take her to the final boss room, which is like a lava pit. And you have to push him into the lava pit. And then he starts chasing you because now he's on fire, and eventually he gets killed. Yeah, he, he, he dies. But the line doesn't end there because Fiona is a version of Loren of uh, of Aurora Aurora's Belly. In fact, I think her full name is her full name is Fiona Aurora's Belly. Like I can't remember exactly. Like there's a lot of lore you have to go find in that game. It's like Resident Evil t style lore. Okay, so this is kind of where the endings... This is where the three different endings happen. If you kill... If you uh, stop Debellatos using the chandelier, you're greeted at the door trying to escape with Debellatos, and then he simply bows his head and continues trimming the hedges. If you uh, kill Debellatos, you just escape. And you just look back at the mansion, and you ever, you just, that's just pretty much it. If you... At some point in the game, after you fight with Debellatos and you say and you uh, kill him with, uh, or you basically uh, stop him with a chandelier, you uh, can go visit Debellatos in his cabin, and he'll give you a key to the bathroom, and you use the bathroom key to find a key that goes to the outside gate, and then you leave. You can leave the game early, and then as you're doing that, Lorenzo it goes, wait, Fiona, come back, my ass off. And pretty much that's the end of the game. Yeah. The reason why this game didn't get... This game came out at the same time Resident Evil did. Like, same week it got dropped. Capcom thought, well, if they're there to buy Resident Evil, they'll buy this game. And the game is su has such heavy themes tied to 
incest, uh, it, what's it called? Forced impregnation, disembowelment, and then the fact that uh, every what's it called everybody is out to get this girl. She's objectified, and throughout the game, there's the only way to defend yourself is through the dog. So there are times in the game where you feel absolutely helpless. You can unlock a costume called the cowgirl, where you can receive uh, what's it called uh, a revolver. And it becomes kind of like a really awesome handgun and I can use in the game. So instead of getting the kick option, you have the handgun option. But don't rely on it too much because basically if you keep uh, using it against the villains that are chasing you and you get them to scare, you do enough damage and scare them off, they'll come back tougher than ever with an even bigger health bar. So like, in this game, it really tries to uh, beat in the fact that not the same the same thing may not work twice if they figure it out they made the npcs really uh, the, the npcs really smart in this one like there was a point where uh i used the dog to uh attack debilitas on multiple times well debilitas later learned the dog will attack him so there are times where he'll look at the dog and attack the dog first before going after me so you have to teach the dog new techniques there's a time where you can actually use the uh, dog, or you can use a mirror to stop Daniela and prevent Daniela for uh, to uh, yeah you can prevent Daniela uh, get Daniela to stop in her tracks by standing in front of the mirror, and she'll actually spend time checking herself out, giving you a tilling of time to escape, but it doesn't always work. There's also points where you can actually just go and you can stand in uh what was it uh. You can actually go and just stand, uh, uh, hide in a closet somewhere, but if the NPCs see you or they start thinking, hey, I think he's hiding in that closet, they'll go and they'll find you in that closet. Like, no problem. Yeah, these NPCs grow smarter over time. So you have to salt. so in your first go around, they seem tough. And then later on, they're like not so tough. But dang, man, like, it's a pretty trippy and far out game, but the reason, but it was, it was, it was released in the wrong time, around the same time Resident Evil, uh, like I say, it came out around the same time Resident Evil 4 did, and people bought Resident Evil 4 over, uh, Haunting Ground. And man, that's, to me, that's what did the game injustice, because it is such a great game. A lot of heavy subject matters. It, it gives you an idea on... It, it gives the gamer a sense of vulnerability. And this is an actual fear in women. So there was actually... Well, women gamers that were actually, like... Uh, that were really spellbound by this idea. Like, this gave them nightmares. Like, uh, at least the one person that did a retrospective of it said that she remembered being very frightened by this game because... This is some real life stuff that could happen. Maybe not everything, but like the idea of being uh, kidnapped and objectified as a as a woman, and then yeah, and then never having and what's called being kidnapped, objectified, all those kinds of uh, mean and hateful things that can happen. Yeah, and then on top of that, you get a sense of vulnerability because. She cannot defend herself. She's not like the typical uh, protagonist that uh, Capcom's used to making with their females, where they're all badass Hollywood-style uh, girls. Nuh uh She's very normal. She has, uh, she actually has an anxiety disorder. That's what causes her panic attacks in the game. In fact, like there are times in cutscene where she will have a panic attack and just faint. Yeah, like, like it, it's pretty terrifying, and she actually tries very hard. She uses Huey as not just as a way of defending, but an emotional support animal because she, there are just some subject matters that she just, there are just some heavy things that she cannot handle in that game. But like any big girl, she manages to get out of there. Canonically speaking, she lets Debilitas live, and she escapes. But there's like no sequel to the game. It was like 
right there kind of marked the end of the Clock Tower franchise. Later on, the game would get a the Clock Tower would get a reboot called Night Cry that I haven't played yet, but I want to so bad. I want to do it on stream because it, it, like that's the thing my I feel as though my channel is missing is horror. But yeah, like when I say this game has when I say uh, th these games um, these games are not for the faint of heart by no means. Like. Just, what's called just talking about the game like a lot of gamers go oh hey that sounds like an awesome game I want to play it and then there are just some people who just feel uncomfortable with playing it just because like wow the subject matter in on itself is pretty heavy especially since like some male gamers they love the game but and it's a great soundtrack and great everything about it but the one thing that really bugs them is they is the sense of vulnerability that they get within the game it's not just any kind of hide and seek so horror that other people have uh, tried or attempted to make no this this game like will make you feel vulnerable by by most means there were times where i had to stop playing the game because like of course i was kind of sucking and losing but there were just times where I just had to stop and just go, I need a hug right now. <laughs> like, there were times where I was like, I need a hug right the frick now. The game is not for the faint of heart. Oh, shit, no! Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. And I just found carrots, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, laugh it up, laugh it up. Oh, man. GG. I can probably find a bucket and grab some water and see if I can grab everything again. But I gotta find that. I don't know, I'll probably end up getting lost again trying to find it. I like that this entire time I'm talking about the heaviest subject material game that you can possibly find on the market. And I do mean it's very, it's a small possibility of finding. Oh, I think I was carrying my bucket on me. Damn. That blows. Yeah, like, I'm talking about, like, this is the, probably one of the heaviest games that you can play. And the only reaction that you've given me is ha ha ha. Yeah. I'm like super passionate about this game though. Like it, it it is one of my favorite games to play. I I got my I convinced my brother to play it on his Twitch stream. And oh man, like he he played it. He had a hard night. Like, he loved playing it. It was really great. It was fascinating. He could point out all the problems with it though. Like any like cuz like he he likes programming games. I know you're multitasking, I know you're multitasking, you're playing Red Dead and you're doing this, but at least I thought at some point you'll pause it and go, come again, my brother? You know, cause like, like I said, this is a pretty subject heavy game. Like, um, when I told this story to my girlfriend, she was just goes, I'm, I'm sorry, she's my fiance now. When I told her the story about this game, like, she she wanted me to stop. She, it was something she did not want to hear. Because I, I told her I was almost done with the story, so she let me finish the story, but I told her, like, if you ever want to know what it, like, I told her, this is what, this, this, is, this is how, I never felt vulnerability like that before, you know? Just the utter feeling of helplessness. It is messed up. It's very messed up. It was critically panned for the sexualization of Fiona over sexualizing her character. And granted, that's where costumes do. When they're talking about her main costume, that is actually the whole point of the game. You're supposed the Fiona is sexually over sexualized because Ricardo is a pervert. And the whole reason be like I said, the whole reason behind the purpose of of doing that to Fiona is so that the player can feel some sort of vulnerability from that. What the heck is that? 
Oh my gosh, it's an abandoned nether portal. Holy crap. That is effing awesome. Wow. Okay, that is great. I'm pretty sure I just killed that. What is that? Oh, it's fire charge. Wow, that's just... Oh, snap. Okay, that's not how that works. This is Bleeding Obsidian. I can't pick it because it's not diamond, that's right. Wow, that's pretty, uh, wow. Not gonna lie, that's actually pretty awesome. So, yeah, like, like I say, when it's... There's a lot of heavy subject matter with the, when it comes to the game and I'm gonna say it like when I tell people it's not for the faint of heart it is not for the faint of heart yeah But yeah, messed up is pretty is a pretty understatement. Like, I flat out looked at my friend after I played the game and said, "Well, Fiona has daddy issues; she'll never get over." And I could not have been farther from the truth. Imagine that your father just was killed by his clone, or your father was killed by a person who is the clone of the same guy, only to figure out that your father is also the clone of another guy. Like, they're both the same clone. They're basically twins. Then you find out that, uh... It's like, and then after that, your clone daddy... <laughs> or your, what's called, or your clone uncle slash father wants to, uh... Wants to impregnate you so that way he can be reborn as the incest baby. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. On top of that, you got a homuncul you got a homunculus woman that wants to uh, that wants to take advantage of the fact that you are in fact a woman and she wants your womb so that she can become a woman. Yeah, it, it is a heavy subject matter game. Like, oh my gosh, it made a lot of people in the early 2000s very uncomfortable. And now gamers in the West want to play the game. You can find the game in Europe. It did pretty well in Europe. It did very well in Japan. It didn't do so well in the United States because any critic that got a chance to critique the game did so on wrong terms and grounds. They did not understand the game if they just went, okay, this is this is pretty messed up and perverted. That's not what we're here for, fam. That's exactly what you're there for, fam. You just don't want to admit it to yourselves. Protection 1, Protection 1, and Thorns? Or Protection 3 and Thorns. Yeah. Like... No joke. And I really, got, I really got excited out of nowhere just now because I thought I was actually going to go into the nether. Turns out I'm not. But yeah, I, I can't believe I lost all those. Damn. I won't ever find it again too because I got lost. Like, I don't have a map to tell me where I need to go. I wish I did. But damn, that sucks. <sighs> but yeah. So, I, I normally don't condone piracy, but I gotta say, Capcom did it on themselves. So for those, for those to, uh, for those that don't, so for those that don't have any kind of way to play the game, I recommend you pirate the game. The idea was to get other people to play the game. Like honestly, if streamers played it and it get and it gained popularity, they would. What's called Capcom probably would put a version of the game 
into the PlayStation Store because the in Japan there is a digital copy of the game. It's the only way to play it. And normally this would be a shameless plug to go, our sponsor for today's video is NordVPN, but that's not the case. <laughs> um, but no, the issue though is that if you want to play this game, go you have to go search, you have to go find it. Like, no joke. You have to go find it, uh, emulate it, pirate it. And if I get if I get told you can't pirate games like that, I'm just literally going to tell people, hey, look, Capcom brought it on themselves by not putting it on the PlayStation Store. If they put it in the PlayStation Store, I will happily stream the entire game, explore it top to bottom, and I will happily endorse the game. But until then, guys, I suggest you get it on your PC and just play the game. Because it, it, it was a very underrated game in its time. I absolutely love this game. It's a stretch to say I adore it, but I do love it. And it's a pretty heavy, and the game isn't for everyone. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who will be deeply disturbed. In fact, when I went to a, a place called 806 Games here in uh, Lubbock, yeah, I told them, uh, I, uh, the first get question I asked is, do you all have a copy of Haunting Ground? And they told me, you're not the first person to ask that. We do not have a copy of Haunting Ground, but if we did, we'd sell it for $350. Because that is the marketed price that everybody is selling their copy of Haunting Ground. And yeah, apparently that's what people are doing. They are, what's it called? They are, by every means of the word, selling that game at the highest of prices. Like, I wish I was the merchant from Resident Evil so I can go, I'll buy it at a high price. Because, man, like, nah, -uh. nah. -uh. That is a game that you cannot play. Or not play, I'm sorry. That is a game that you have to at least play once. And it has great unlockables, too. It, it, the, and you can get different things and different scenarios happening as well. Like I did, like I played there the game once or twice. I'd made it down to the second time in the hardcore mode and got a different, uh, not a different ending. I won't say I had a different ending, but I played it in the, uh, or I may have played it in the hardest difficulty, so I could check out the character because the characters, all the characters' costumes change. I want to say Fiona's too, but I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Wow, there was a Savannah over here. I don't know why I kept going into forested areas. Dang, I didn't realize I was so close to Savannah. I wanted to get close to a jungle biome because, oh my gosh. Jungle biomes. Let me tell you. Bamboo, and you can make them into scaffolding. Okay, cool. So all I gotta do is try and find my stuff. Hopefully it hasn't despawned. No, in my luck, I'll get close, and it will totally despawn. I you know in my uh, it would be awesome though if I had like my bucket, like somehow jump back up, like hey, here's your bucket. Oh, I got my bucket back. But yeah, uh, Rogue Wrench, if you have a PC, dude, you gotta pirate the game. <laughs> Okay, I, 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 that's enough of that, but yeah. Um, but yeah, when I went to 806 and I asked for the game, they told me, no, nah, it's pretty rare. You're not, and the, they always ask for another game too. Oh, what's that game? Rule of Rose? I didn't even have to ask, and that was my next question. Do y'all carry Rule of Rose? And to give you all, to, some of y'all don't may not know, but Rule of Rose is another popular indie horror game. Um, or not indie horror, it's actually made from a mainstream studio. It's the same basic concept. You're playing a female character. No PC, but I do have a Switch. It's not on the Switch store, but I wish it was. Dang, you can't use Bleeding Obsidian. But there's a lot of Netherrack there. I do like that. It's like, you should build a, a portal here. That's what it's telling me.
But yeah, like no joke though. Uh, I, I want. Yeah, I, I would just get a PC. I want to get it just just get a PC just so I could stream that game. Yeah, cause uh. But I digress. I have to digress. Man, I feel I can't believe I just died. I, I I had had a lot of levels. I had a lot of good equipment. I found carrots. I like I found carrots, and that was the whole point. I wanted to grow carrots. I had five emeralds. I had a lot of different things, and now there's a cave over here. I don't know. Part of me wants to go into the creative mode and just drop a bunch of a. Uh, uh, TNT somewhere and just boom, have fun. I don't even have torches. Go ahead and get these in. And there went the gold pickaxe. Typical. But yeah, like, it makes me kind of sad. Well, the thing is that Capcom, like, there's a kind of a cult following for the game out here in the West. And only in Japan's PlayStation Store you can play Haunting Ground. And some people said you could play it, but here's the thing. Capcom was one of these few Japanese companies that will actually hire English-speaking voice actors for Japanese games, depending on the location. I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Rogue Wrench, but in the first, very first Resident Evil game, Capcom hired an all-English-speaking cast. And, uh, and they were all very cheaply paid, they were very cheaply paid actors. You get the classic Joseph line from the from the from these people, and the famous Jill Sandwich. But these are all actors that have no experience or business being an actor. <laughs> uh, as 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 cruelly as that sounds. Um. But basically, these people go and uh, they're saying, "Hey, yeah, we're voice actors. What's up?" And so. Uh, they also did live action sequences in yeah. I love voice uh I love voice act even if they if the pay was crappy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Well, yeah, they weren't the pay was crappy, but that's just because they were under uh they're they're not professional at all. And the thing was they also did horrible acting. They did live action sequences, but the thing I'm getting at is in Japan because the game takes place in America, they went ahead and said, Japan went ahead and said, okay, we're going to, uh, here, here's the dealio with us. We're going to make these characters, uh, American. So let's, uh, do this. And so we're going to play, we're, we're going to voice act and do American stuff. So let's go ahead and do this. And, um, um, sorry. American voice, yeah. They pretty much said, okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, start. Uh, um, sorry, I'm getting so tongue tied with myself. Sorry, I, I get annoyed. I annoy myself when I t get tongue tied like this. Okay, so basically, the they will use their the voice acting talents or whatever and go, uh, or basically, they'll make English speaking games. So in Japan, um, the very first thing that Jap Japanese will have, like in the very first Resident Evil game, all in English, but except for the Jap, except for the text, all the text is done in Japanese. So the Japanese uh, version of the game is in e is voiced in English with Japanese subtitles, and they and Capcom says they wanted to do that because the game takes place in America, so they should speak, um, uh, what's they should speak basic, um, English. And that's just kind of what, uh, and that's just what they love to do. And then, Haunting Ground, its voice acting was done in Japanese, 
with Japanese subtitles. So when you go play the game in English, uh, I think you have I think you have the option to do English subtitles. I don't recall, but you can play you can but they they get rid of the Japanese subtitles and you can go play the game. But there's no there's no uh, setting on the game to change the language to English. If there is, that'd be awesome. But I don't know if but I don't think there is. Yeah. So, and on top of that, there's a lot of let. Uh, there's a lot of playthroughs of the game that you can just watch for the cutscenes or whatever. All right, guys, that's all the time I'm gonna have for today. Um, I'm pretty exhausted and worn out from just talking a lot. I gotta get some stuff taken care of, but I'll catch you guys later, and I'll see y'all next stream. And for those that just joined today, please uh, comment. Uh, please subscribe and ring that notification button next to the subscribe button. So that way you can know whenever I'm online. All right. Thanks, man. I'll catch you all later. Oh, wait. That's not how you exit out of here.